Your classroom may sometimes sound like a football stadium at the 89th minute, but you don't have to shout to make yourself heard. There's nothing more likely to send your pupils to sleep than a dull, monotonous tone or a repetitive inflection pattern. Try using variety in your voice. Try to vary the pitch, tone, inflection and pace of your voice as much as possible. Add a bit of drama to your speech. Don't be afraid to mimic even just a little bit the speech patterns of actors and other really powerful speakers. So what you do, speak really slowly and add lots of dramatic pauses to your speech to make your pupils hang on your every word. It can really hurt your throat to shout like that. But you don't have to strain your throat to make yourself heard. When we speak, sing or make any vocal noise, there are three physiological processes involved. The first one of these is breath. That's when we take a big, deep breath into the base of our lungs, through our diaphragm and our ribs, ready to speak. The second process is known as phonation or sound. That's when we breathe out, the vocal cords come together, the air passing through them creates a little vibration, and there we have the noise. The third process is resonance. Now, this is the important one. Our body is very much like a musical instrument. If we were to take the string and bow of a violin and play them together, they would sound pretty dull and very small. What we need is we need the body of the violin for the sound to resonate in. When we speak, it is our chest and the cavities inside our face in which our voice resonates. Most people make the mistake when they're trying to really project their voices of forcing or straining from their throat. Whereas in fact, if you want to make a big sound, but a healthy big sound, all you need to do is to take a really deep breath into the lungs and the diaphragm and create lots of space inside the mouth and then you'll have a big shout but one that won't harm your throat at all. So, that was a foul ref! Vocal health is really, really important, especially in your profession. There are lots of do's and don'ts when it comes to taking care of the voice. First of all, water, water, water. Drinking lots of cold, fresh water is great because it keeps your voice hydrated. Never feel embarrassed in a public speaking situation to have a bottle of water with you at all times. Hot or warm water with lemon and honey is great if you're feeling a bit sore in the throat. Often one can have a very dry office or classroom that one's working in. You could just keep a bowl of water in the corner of the room and that keeps the air moist which in turn will keep your vocal cords moist. The other thing that's really good for your voice, particularly if you're feeling a little bit dry in the throat, is to suck sweets like humbugs or fruit pastels. However, the most important thing for anyone's vocal health is sleep. It's really important to get enough sleep because a tired person produces a really tired, sore voice. There are some things that aren't so good for the voice. That tends to be because they dry out the vocal cords. These include things like drinking lots of alcohol, tobacco obviously, lots of caffeine, eating very spicy foods, eating late at night. Not that we don't want you to have any fun, of course. There's something else which is not very good for the vocal cords, which often surprises people. And that is things like medicated cough sweets and throat lozenges. The reason is, is they have lots of bad chemicals in which can be very astringent. So unless you've got a terrible cold, just avoid those. And finally, whispering. Whispering is very bad for the voice. When you whisper, you put a lot of pressure on the vocal cords. So if your voice is feeling tired, just speak as quietly as you can without actually whispering. <laughs> you own the time in the classroom, so take your time. Rushing will make you seem less than confident, even just desperate to get it over with. 
Many of the best teachers are those who use their voices most effectively. It is, after all, your most valuable and versatile educational tool.